All right, what's happening, everybody? Uh, thanks for joining me today for this Epic Surf News uh, board meeting edition. And I am here with Liam O'Callaghan, LOC760. How's it going, brother? Good, how are you? Good, man. I'm so stoked that um, you joined me today. I'm always trying to mix it up with a lot of the local talent. And uh, I have heard good stuff about your surfing. And then I also, of course, I'm linked up with you on Instagram, so I, I check that stuff out. Looking sharp, man. Hey, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I'm just right. having fun. Yeah. So where do you, where do you um where do you like to surf at? Where, where's some of the spots? I mean, you don't have to be super specific if you don't want, but like, where do you like to surf? My favorite spots, the spots that I grew up surfing, were around Cardiff, like suckouts, traps, pipes, and blacks. And I just recently surfed the wedge last week too. So that was quite an experience. Wow. Okay. So I used to live pretty close to the wedge and um, man, I don't want to surf that. I'm scared. Yeah. It's pretty scary because every time you kick out of a wave, there's either no water at all or only ankle deep water. It's pretty sketchy. Yeah. And I'm, I'm on a short board. So I get, you know, I try, I get a little bold sometimes in shallow waters, but um, you're on a long board, right? The board I was riding out there was a 7 6 2 plus 1, like a miniature longboard. So something in between a longboard and a shortboard, but something that I could still get into the wave early and still have enough, have the right amount of board to make the steep drop. Right, right. Because, uh, yeah, so, yeah, it's like a big mid length or, yeah, a small longboard or something, huh? Yep. And the 2 plus 1 fin configuration just so, holds in, in that wave. So, so what, what, I, I mean, how do you get from you know surfing Cardiff and pipes and I mean how do you get from that to surfing the wedge? I mean what what happened? What made that happen? Well, I've I grew up surfing mellow waves all my life, but um, then I just recently went down to Blacks a couple years ago and got the feel of that on a bigger day. Right. And I just enjoyed it. And even though it's like a much better wave than the wedge, but. <laughs> Because Blacks is more makeable and it's deeper water and the wedge is like only ankle deep water so that there's like a big difference there. And everybody would say that the wedge is a big closeout, which it can be, but if you get it on the right day, it's really, really good. So what made me really want to go was watching videos of it on good days just made me want to go and get a challenge. Right, right. Yeah, so I've seen it. I mean, it it's a good wave, but I think, um, like I like, Big, you know, I don't not too big waves, but I like big waves. I like eight foot, you know, a, a good eight foot, which means whatever that means. But um, yeah, the wedge is a trip though because it's not just a little bit of water, but it almost kind of beach almost kind of comes up, right? Too. So it's, it's very it's, scary. <laughs> yeah. So, so I'm not really into that part of it, you know. And and like you were talking about, you know, like blacks or other places where you have a longer shoulder. Um, more of a uh, a build up where you see the lines coming. I like that. You know, I can kind of plan it out, figure it out. But the wedge is just like, woo, you know. And, yeah. It's very backwashy, and blacks is. I would prefer blacks over the wedge any day. <laughs> so how many honest. waves? How many waves did you get? At the wedge, I caught four waves, and two of them were good. One I got sucked over the falls. And then the other one, um, it was just like a small side wave and I took it all the way through. So that was fun. Nice. Yeah, that, that little mini where it starts off on the on the behind the peak. Yep. Oh, cool. And so uh so you wanted to just do this. So did you have a road dog? Did somebody go with you and charge this with you, or what happened? Yeah, my buddy Saxon Chang is a professional surf photographer. His dad is Aaron Chang. And his, he's right. a professional photographer, and he actually went up there with me and got these rad pictures of me surfing the wedge. And he got some really good pics, and he put himself in the spot where the impact was, and it was so Dangerous. hard. I remember him. He took some, he took some beatings getting yeah, those you, shots. You, yeah, you can't just swim around out there without taking a beating, that's for sure. Yeah, well, right on, man. Well, congratulations on that one. And so you got four waves, and you said, I I'm done. Yes, because I didn't <laughs> want to push my luck. I didn't want to break my neck out there. I didn't want to break my board. Yeah. I'm like, 
I think four waves, four waves is good enough. And the wedge was just a one-time thing for me because okay. it's a neck breaking wave and I don't want to yeah. spend the rest of my life in a wheelchair. So yeah. I just yeah, wanted too. to get the experience. Yeah, me too. I, 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 that's what I think. I'm like, man, I would, I'd be that guy who would just slam into the shore or something. And, but, uh, one wave, two waves would probably be satisfying for sure. So, yeah. so board's good, man. And your board's okay. Yeah, and my board it didn't get buckled. It held up great, and I just I just chose my waves wisely. I didn't just take off on any wave that came to me. Because remember, um, I remember watching the Dirty Old Wedge documentary, and there's actually a group of local body surfers up there that like are really serious about their break, and you don't right. drop in on them, and you let them have their waves first. Right. And and then if the, you respect them and they see that you know what you're doing, then they'll let you get some waves, and that's right. what happens. So yeah, that would yeah, that would make it a little easier to kind of have like a good vibe and just work it all out out there. <laughs> what, so who who's the shaper of the seven six that survived the wedge? Uh, the shaper of the seven six is Jeff Gregera from Iron Cross Surfboards. They've been shaping high performance longboards since the 1990s. And they've been making all my boards now for a couple of years and I've really been liking them. All right, cool. So Iron Cross survived the wedge. I love it. Is there um, a particular um, person that works on your boards over there or is it just, you know, whoever's handling it or? Yeah, whoever's handling it, but the shaper is Jeff Gregera, his son is Jay Gregera, and then okay. just the whole Iron Cross crew. They've just been amazing to me. They've been supportive for nice. me through contests, outside of contests. And they've just been really, I just appreciate all their support. Right on. Well, right on to those guys. Um, so contest stuff, you've been doing, uh, how long have you been doing contests? I've been going, I've been doing contests now. I've always considered myself as a free surfer. I really got serious about contests four years ago when I started doing SSS. Mm. And I remember my first few contests, I didn't do so good. I would always lose out first round. But then I, as I would keep doing the contest more and more, I started to learn different breaks and learn about the people that I'm going to be surfing against right. and their style. And because a lot of these guys were just phenomenal surfers, these contest right. surfers. It's amazing watching yeah. them in person. Um, SSS, that's a Scholastic Surf Series, everybody. And uh, yeah, they're, so they're, they're students. They're anywhere from middle school to college, right? Is that how that works? Uh, NSSA is college. Oh, right. Okay. Um, um, but NSSA could be middle school, high school, and college. Um, cause, but NSSA is like a much harder division because the guys in NSSA are absolutely right. like just in all the contest categories, you're going to run into good surfers. But Scholastic Surf Series as well. So that's just high school and middle school is Scholastic Surf Series. Uh, correct. That, that, at least for me. Right. Oh, yeah. Okay. Right on. Okay. All right. I get you. So, uh, so then you've, you've kind of sorted out in the last four years and now you, I noticed that you did, did a WSA event or are you in that as well or? Yeah, I've been involved with the WSA going on three years now. And, um, I remember I have some very memorable moments, but the very first contest I won was actually down in ocean beach at the WSA during the 20, 2018 2019 season and that oh, was right a on. definitely memorable moment yeah Thank congratulations you. wow so um who did you have to get past to to uh win win at that uh we had so many good longboarders from san clemente like my friend bobby hasbrook he's he just always inspires me like yeah. he, he could ride anything and make it look good and he's just a phenomenal surfer and i learned so much every time i surf with him so so did did you face Bobby in uh, one of your heats? In, you know that day is that or I faced him in pretty much all my heats, okay. but not that day. The time I won another contest in Huntington Beach uh, this past season, actually, and I faced against him and I won that one. Nice. So was that was that north side of the pier, south side of the pier? Where they have that? South side of the Huntington Pier. Oh, nice man! I used to live right over there, so I used to surf. Uh, E either there or right in front of like the TK burger, you know? Yeah. Oh man, you're on fire right now, dude. Right on. Oh, I've I've only won two contests in my life. Like all the rest, I've gotten like anywhere from like second, third, fourth, 
because all, all, all the guys I surf against are just phenomenal surfers. It's amazing to just even compete against them. It's just who, an honor to learn from them. Yeah, so who was in that final? Uh, gosh, uh, this one kid named Logan, um, Bobby, of course, uh, Shea Roney, uh, George Barba. All right, cool. So yeah, that's like, quite a few people. So it's it's a it's a six man heat, or how many people were in that heat? Uh, it was a six man heat. Oh, and also I forgot another kid. Uh, the, another kid named Hudson was in it too. So it was just it was Hudson, Logan, Bobby, Shay, George Barba, and myself in the right final. Right on, man. So how did you? Um, I mean, what's your what's your game plan? I mean, when you're doing all this stuff, I mean, are you just like just doing your own thing and keeping it like focused or how do you manage, uh, you know, how do you get to the finals and then win? I mean, it seems tough. Uh, uh, the main thing is, is I usually, tr I've always treated contests like they're free surfs because mm -hmm. if you think about the contest too much, your best surfing won't shine through. If you're having fun, like you are in a free surf, that's when your best surfing shines through. It doesn't matter what equipment you're on. As long as you're having fun, that's what counts because the best surfer is the one having the most fun on my opinion. Right on. right on. Well, yeah, that's awesome. Um, I've only done a couple competitions, so I don't really know much about it. it you know, I, I probably still haven't really got the butterflies even, you know, out of my stomach yet for the whole thing, but um, you know, I'll probably chip out a few more uh, in the coming years and give it a shot. I, I've just done a couple through um, Oceanside uh, Longboard Club. But, oh, great. Yeah, that's a good organization, the club contest. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. It seems like a little less pressure and, um, you know, it's a little, you know, it's not super organized like WSA events or anything, but um, that makes it kind of fun. And there's a lot of really good surfers there as well. Um, I'm working my way towards longboarding, so I don't really have a longboard yet. Um, I have a mid length that's about as big as I've gotten. And so some of these events they have basically a short board category for the day and so when they do that then i sneak in and i've tried that a couple of times <laughs> and i lost I, I got you know i got smoked every time right and yeah, well i remember i used, i did a little bit of shortboard contest but i've only made two finals in shortboarding i was never really a shortboard type of guy i've always loved longboarding because i love using every part of the board Right, right. Yeah, there's, um, so in terms of using every part of the board, uh, in, in recent years, what's one of the maneuvers or one of the, the things you've done to it that you've worked on and, and actually improved upon in your surfing? Um, well, I've been working on a lot of drop knee cutbacks. Like yeah. I've been working on like um, switch foot drop knee cutbacks. I've also been working on staying on the nose longer as well as um, doing top turns, like mixing up my surfing, getting my longboard more vertical on roundhouses. Okay. So I, I, um, I just kind of watch, I study, I, you know, I'm studying all the longboarders as I'm out there all the time and, you know, I'm mentally kind of getting there. And so I watch uh, Taylor Jensen, he surfs, sometimes right around where I'm surfing at and um gosh that guy is amazing right oh he's Taylor's been one of my childhood heroes ever since I began longboarding so shout yeah. out to Taylor for sure yeah and that so he's so what made me think of him is that when you said that drop me uh you know turn he's got that thing dialed man oh and he yeah and he's a big powerful guy too he could really put a longboard on rail he's probably like 6'10 or something right Six five. I think. <laughs> oh, six I think. Five. <laughs> See? He gets bigger. Every time I talk about him, he's like taller and taller. I think. But yeah, he's always he's always one that I looked up to. And I would like to give a shout out to all the people that got me into longboarding and people I've looked up to, like Shay Roney, Mitch Farner, yeah. Taylor Jensen, Phil Rajman, yeah. Nate Van Shack, RJ Hervey, Bobby Hasbrook, just all those guys just inspired me. They inspired you to, to kind of go that direction. So did you um, start longboard, go shortboard and come back? Or did you start shortboard? How did you do it? Well, the very first time I started surfing, 
um, my dad gave me one of his old mid-lengths. It was a 6'8 thruster from the 90s, like the classic thruster setup, and it was all beat up and dinged up, but I enjoyed it. It was a really fun board, and that was actually the very first board I did a bottom turn on, so I was pretty right. happy about that. Right. I just, I just stepped up to mid-lengths recently, well, maybe a year, year and a half ago, and so, man, it yeah, now I can bottom turn and, you know, I can swing the board a little bit more and it feels great. But, but you actually, so you started with that though. You started with that mid length size and which was probably big when you were a smaller kid for you even, right? Like, yeah. Cause I, like I was very small at the time. I think I was only like, gosh, I was like a little bit above four feet tall. So a six, eight mid length was like a long board to me. So right. I was able to catch waves on it easy. And it was really easy for me to stand up. And then, like, as I grew older and I got bigger, it just became easier to turn it and stuff like that. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, I can actually do this. And then I went got a real shortboard when I got more advanced. It was a 5'4 rusty quad fin. Nice. And so that was my uh, very first shortboard. And uh, it was a really fun board. It was almost like a fish. I could take it out on mushy days and just have fun on it. But then after that, I outgrew it. And then I jumped into longboarding because I just didn't want to take shortboarding too serious anymore. I just liked longboarding. Yeah. Okay. That's, yeah, that's, I'm always interested because I've been, I've started off as shortboarder and then just like, you know, a uh, stubborn guy just did that forever. <laughs> you know? and, um, and so now I'm going the other direction. So I never learned on a longboard though. So, I'm actually trying to like, you know, start from almost square one because a longboard is a lot, of, lot to deal with. You know, you mm -hmm. can hurt people with it, and so I'm yeah. trying not to. I'm gonna try not to be dangerous out there and um, find the moments. But yeah, so and then so for me, I never wanted to. When I was younger, I never wanted to longboard, learn or didn't want to put time into it because I was afraid that I would end up as a longboarder and never come back. So yeah, kind that's of what happened to me opposite but yeah so now i'm now i'm like oh man i want to do that it looks so much fun so so okay so you got that drop knee freaking cut back you're doing nice. yeah and working so on it. you're working on it though that's awesome man um so what you mentioned your surfboards that you're riding what about wetsuits what, what's working for you uh on the, on the neoprene side well the wetsuits i'm currently wearing um I remember I had to wear a 4.3 when I went up to Central California for a WSA event because the water's really cold up there. Right. And so, but most of the time I'm either wearing a 3.2, a spring suit, or trunks and a vest, depending what, on the water what, temp. Well, what brand though? What label? Oh, it, it varies. Like I have, a, I have a body glove full suit right now, mm -hmm. um, a rip curl spring suit, and an oxbow wetsuit vest Okay. with billabong cool. trunks. Oh, nice, man. Well, I like to let people know, you know, what's working for guys that are uh, making it work. So, yeah, everybody, there you go. Some oxbows and some billabong trunks and rip curl. Right on. Okay. Um, so, uh, in terms of the surf scene, last couple months or, you know, in the last several months, um, who are some of the people in free surfs that are having a good time out there? You see people, that, you know, you're like, oh, man, that person's always having a good time just regular people from around town anybody standing out to you oh gosh yes yeah, so many people like all the people i surf with that pipes definitely uh -huh. um just like everybody i've known around the cardiff area since i was a little kid because they all watched me grow up hmm. okay and um so who but who's throw, throw out some names man who's who's looking good in the free surf uh shay roney <laughs> Always. Okay. Uh, Mitch Farner, my buddy Jake Hennessy as well. Shout out to him because he uh, always inspires me every day with his positivity, and he's probably one of the best short quarters I know in person. Okay, right on, man. Right on. And uh, what about industry? Industry news, surf industry. I mean, is there any stories out there that kind of caught your attention, um, whether it's brands or or events or things going on? Uh, the stories that really caught my attention since the whole time was just 
I'm just improving really like improving and learning by watching other people and hearing their stories on their journeys because we all come from a different background and we all learn differently so you can always reflect off of somebody else's journey background to make yeah. yourself better yeah so yeah that's definitely been uh in the forefront of a lot of things going on and uh paddle outs and and different activities right now which is pretty cool um yeah that's that's definitely uh something that i've been kind of doing as well okay so all right so speaking about good attitudes and vibes and all that kind of stuff it's uh summertime or, or it it's officially in a few more days i think but it feels like it's been summer kind of action for the last couple of weeks how do you how do you maintain that vibe and when it's crowded out there and how do you what's your strategy <laughs> Uh, my strategy is just be open hearted to everybody, um, like make sure everybody gets their waves. And if people want to drop in on each other, I don't really bother with that as long as, you know, they don't do it to me or ding my board or anything like that. But overall, like during the crowds, I just surf inside of everybody and I just catch the little waves that nobody else gets. And I just let everybody else have the sets and have a good time while I have my own peak to myself. See, and that's it. That's an amazing strategy. There's a couple of really good surfers where I surf and I, I see them doing that as well. And it, you know, it's like, I think the starting point is like, you're grateful to get like even the, the little wave. And then that, that like mat turns into magic. And next thing you know, like I'll be like waiting for the wave out, you know, out the back and I turn around and I, every time I turn around, I'll see somebody just, ripping across the inside and it's always the same guy I'm like ah see they're they're not being stingy they're just kind of you know trying to be on the inside not trying to get in the way and next thing you know they're getting like 10 waves to my one wave yeah it's just <laughs> because like sometimes those inside double ups are actually better yeah see there you go everybody so this summer hang out on the inside and you're going to get all the love and that it'll all just turn on for you i think indeed yeah that's, that's just great. being in the water is love in general it's just sure it's a big release no matter how good of a surfer you are because stuff's not always easy on land right. right stuff's not always easy on land so when you get in the water it's a big release and when you're on a wave it feels like you're flying mm -hmm. yeah yeah land um we all move at different speeds and uh yeah deal with different things in the world in our own lives and so yeah you get to the water and it it's um yeah it's it's that energy right you're you're catching that energy on its last little trip and uh making the best That's so all you can do right i'm gonna move on to the next one brother uh so check it out so um i'm gonna start off with the game of yay or nay and i'm gonna throw out a couple things to you and uh let's see what you think if you if it's give me the yay or nay and then let me know why you know what i mean um I, i'm gonna call this I, I got schooled up yesterday so first i wanted to say the bulldog stance but somebody told me it's called the wing nut i i, I don't know if i'm getting the i'm a short border so i don't do you know what i'm talking about yeah i i've heard of those stances but i don't think i do any of those stances i just do a normal, a well, you normal know, like, upper, upright composed stance right so you know like when someone's like you're you're going down the wave right and then all of a sudden you you get sideways and your board's like this way and you're just like cruising for a minute. You know what I mean? Yeah, I've done that before, but I would prefer a, like the, a split between a squat down stance and a, an upright stance, like when you're on the nose because it shows control and cross-stepping shows control. Right, okay. Yeah, right on, okay. So we'll call that a nay. I can't do it anyways. I want to. I think I want to try to learn, but... Um, Definitely want to get on that nose. Uh, A-Sims. Yay or nay? Nay. <laughs> so, yeah, so, you know. They're, I never really tried one. Me neither. Me neither. But the tail thing and the fin thing, um, uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure what to make of it. I'm not sure. Like, I haven't been motivated to go ask my shaper to make me one or anything. Yeah, I've those things do look like fun i've always wanted to try one i just never got to but i hope to try one one day yeah nice yeah i have a buddy and he just 
uh, he tried it and then bought it, but he took it to Sano and it was like a long, you know, slow wave. And he was, he made it look like it was fun. And I was like, and even then still my mind is just like, I don't know. I don't know if I want to do that, but, but it was a really cool board and he had the best day on it. So, um, yeah, so there you go. All right. I got a, I got a good one for you. Mustaches. Yay. Yay. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to grow mine out the best I can because not everybody can grow facial hair. So I think if you're going to grow. Bring it in. Let's see. Bring it in. All right. He's working on it, baby. Okay. All right. There we go. Because not everybody can grow facial hair. So you have to embrace it. All you have to do is just trim it up a little bit and you'll be okay. Because, but the only disadvantage is on a hot day when you sweat. It, it feels itchy if it gets too long. So you have to like constantly keep trimming and grooming yourself. Yeah, I've done, you know, I do this part a little bit, but up here, you know, the downside for me is uh, whether it's surfing or I have allergies or something, but I blow my nose and then the, the, there's like tissue all over it for some reason because I blow so hard and then it like sticks. Or like if you're eating, there's like food and I'm just that guy that I would just probably walk around for hours and nobody would say anything and I would just probably have all this action all over my face you know? <laughs> <laughs> well sometimes when you have facial hair it's you don't become aware of it too much it becomes a common thing right yeah uh, maybe I have to work with that we'll have to try it out a few more times um, so what about uh, pier fishing and the fishing lines and all that do you surf any piers or not really I've surfed the Oceanside Pier a handful of times on a good south swell, but okay. overall, I don't really surf next to piers too much. Okay, so it probably doesn't really affect you a whole lot. Um, since you're competing, uh, yay or nay on claiming? Nay. Nay. Okay, so when you won those contests, you just, you held it in. You, you kept the claim under wraps. I did because... I don't, I don't want to like be like, yeah, yeah, I won. I just, I was just like, I was just happy because I, it's always an honor to surf with good surfers. That's what I like. Like, I don't really like to claim it. I just like to, I just like to just surf and learn from them. Sure. Sure. Right on. Okay. Yeah. Now, fair enough, man. Uh, my last one on yay or nay, kombucha. Nay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Cool. I think I, I asked that question to Mitch and he didn't even know what the heck that was. You know? I don't even know what it is either. So. Yeah, I barely do as well. I've tried it, but I don't, yeah, totally. I, I had some, somebody did explain it for me, but um, yeah, it's just not that tasty to me. So um, right on. Well, that wraps it up, everybody. I mean, that was so epic right there. Um, but Liam, I mean, Anything else on your mind? I mean, what's going on? What's popping uh, in the surf world or in your world? Uh, speak on something. Let me know. Well, I do enjoy being out in the water every day. I love being with my friends, my family, people who inspire me and have given me everything that I could ask for. I just want to give a shout out to all my friends and family for all the endless support throughout the years as well as Iron Cross surfboards. Right on. Yeah, so um, that's awesome that you said that. And uh, it's important, yes, to support, you know, people that support surfing. Um, and it's such a wonderful thing. So um, mom and dad, what's mom and dad's names? My, my mom and dad are Tom and Don. Tom and Don. Woo! Right on. Good job. Um, and Iron Cross Surfboards, Surviving the Wedge. Um, and, Blacks uh, too. Which one? Blacks oh, too. Oh, Blacks too. And uh, not, not only Iron Cross Surfboards, but Saxon. He survived the wedge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so, yeah, people like Saxon, surf photographers, surf videographers, man. Thanks a lot. It's such a great world when you can actually um, catch those memories sometimes. and. Um, yeah, a couple of pictures I've gotten, I've made a little poster or a t-shirt out of, or it's just kind of fun stuff to have around. And um, when it's nighttime or when you're not surfing, you can kind of reflect. So 
yeah, pretty good stuff. Right on, everybody. Well, uh, yeah. yeah, thanks so much for Liam for uh, coming on. And I definitely want to get you on again. And uh, maybe we'll mix it up with a couple other surfers and, you know, have a few more squares in the screen. Sounds good. Right on. Yeah.